Good morning! Bad news. As you can tell, I am a co-pilot short. Typo went in for semi-emergency surgery yesterday. She's fine. She's recovered. We're picking her up today. She'll currently be on a morphine bed in Melbourne. So Typo had a grass seed in her neck near her jugular, roughly there, but on dog form. Not good. Not good at all. I'm just going around these ewes. We're doing fly-blown sheep uh, because we've had a hit, shit ton of rain and then we got blasted with humidity yesterday. I'm expecting to find some. But I filmed a few clips throughout since Friday when I found the lump. It was the size of a marble. And when I dropped her off at the vet on Tuesday for her to stay overnight for her surgery, it was probably the size of a golf ball. Here's my Australian white dude for those of you who watched that video of me putting him in. He's hard at work. Gotcha. Right, we've got one fly blown you. But I'll insert the footage now of... I'll insert the footage now of the last week. So Slug has growths happening. Or well, not growths, but she's got a swollen neck. Don't think you can see it. This side here is massive. Like down near... Pick your head up. Here is all swollen. I think you can kind of see it there, the bubbles out. So she's off to the vet at 12 o'clock today. We're going to Melbourne, um, going to Collingwood with Typo to try and get it fixed. There is patient. So here's the Chinatown vlog. The vet's just up there. We almost got there and we've just been told that because Typo's stable, it's not really worth coming. Good morning, we've got a late start this morning because I've been on the phone all morning trying to find surgery for Typo, but it's not life threatening. So what's happened is Typo, we found a lump in Typo's neck on Friday. It's a, it is, I'm pretty sure it's a grass seed. We took her to the vet Saturday. We didn't like the options they were giving us, so we, we took her to Melbourne. The grass seed is in her neck and she has a massive lump about this big in her neck and a shit ton of swelling. Um, finally found a vet that is going to see her at three o'clock today in Melbourne. She's gonna get a CT and surgery tomorrow. Car now on the way to the vet. Slug doesn't know, but we're ha she's having a sleepover at the vet tonight. So Typo's been dropped off and now we wait. Freight train. Woo! It's going to Adelaide, I assume. Good morning, it's 7.30 now. Typo's going in for surgery at around 10. Oh, the CT and then the surgery. Um, I'll update you when I know more. It's almost 12 o'clock now. I haven't heard anything about slug. I assume she will be out of surgery soon, I hope. I'm getting a little bit anxious. I'm just out feeding a couple of sheeps of bales because, because of all this rain, um, everything, everything was dead um, end of November. But now because of all this rain, everything's popped back up and it's green again. So for all the sheep who were in paddocks where the grass died, that have gone back into green grass, you need to give them hay so they don't scour because they've gone from not very rich food to like chocolate mousse. Rich chocolate mousse. And then they get chocolate mousse all over their ass. They had a bigger emergency this morning, so Typo was pushed back. Nice when the gates won't open, hey. Forgot to give an update, but Slug got out of surgery at, I think around 6.30. Uh, she has a, she's done well. They did find the grass seed. It took them about, I think it was four hours. She went in at two o'clock. Um, we'll be picking her up sometime tomorrow. Normally at this point in the chase, I would release the slug, but I have no slug to release. I think I'm just gonna have to run her until she either accepts defeat or she's slow enough I can run up and catch her. I won't be able to drag her far because she is a very big girl. It has come to my attention. Someone's taken the fucking click out of the car. I have to go get the bloody click. I will be back. I will be back for you, woman. Anyway, so I'm currently waiting um, for the call from the vet to what time I can go pick up Slug. We took the back off of this because the tray's shit. 
I'll also set up the shears, I suppose, while I am not catching a sheep anyway. I accidentally nicked the knife out of the um out of the doits when I was feeding hay out yesterday. I'll put it back because I'm gonna want to need it next time I get in here. Pocket knives seem to just go in your pocket and then they stay there until you get home and you sit down and all of a sudden you're getting stabbed in the neck, stabbed in the hip, and you're like, oh shit, I've taken another one. I have a small collection of dad's pocket knives on my kitchen bench. I think I mentioned this in a members video, but I'll show you now because I spoke about the wool last week. Here's my sheep's wool. Um, this is the fat lamb wool, that one there on the end. That's a crossbred. That's all crossbred. This is my second merino fleece. This one here, I think she's more. I think she might be a bit of a crossbred. This one here, this is a crossbred. Just need to grab the click which i believe is there that is not the bottle i was looking for where the fuck is the bottle it's down the other end they were concerned about swelling because it's in the neck region is this a shit one no nah, this one will do they were concerned about swelling because it's near a jugular they didn't want her to like swell up and choke to death slowly so They've used all my bloody fucking spray. That's why they kept her overnight. That's not even fucking open. Is there an open? I do see a strike force up here though. Strike force. Yep, yeah, there is stuff in it. I'll grab the bottle and fill it up. It's right on top. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Now we're good. There we go. If we didn't put this bar on, we would not do something that fucking stupid. For those of you who buy aftermarket car parts, make sure they fit your fucking car. I think this is going to be very difficult to do without slug. Let's go get these flies. You might be thinking, why is the title emergency surgery? I imagine my victim is back over there, so we're going to have to hunt her down again. I literally cannot find her. I'm going through them again. Dad's going to be going around them again, I think, later today. So I might just need to put this paddock on his list. I, I fucking can't find her. She's keeping herself well hidden, I think. She doesn't want to be chased around again. So we'll go into the back. Hopefully let them span back out again because they've all gone and hidden behind the dam. Then we'll try again. And if not, I'm going to have to just move on to the next one because I'm sure there's other sheep that need to be done. I can't help you if you're not going to help me. So there's not much more I can do. One at the back should be nice and easy, this one. She's already slow. Could you imagine if the other one just did this? How easy it would be. Hello, darling. Off you go. Come on. Up you hop. She'll go when she feels like it. All right, we'll go check the rest. She should be up by the time we come back. Okay. Got another one here. I'm just trying to get to lay down. She's not as cooperative. <coughs> On her hip. Okay, we got her. Um, this one is only hours old. I don't even think there's maggots on her yet. All right, so this is very, 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 very early. Um, see how the wool's gone green and it's rotting? That's what attracts the maggots. This is a common risk with um, flat back sheep is the rain goes on them and then the maggots attack. See how there's only little maggots there? That's hardly, this is hours old. And see how it just travels down the back and see how 
the rain drips down the side of the sheep here. That's all water that's drained off of the sheep and then gone down. See the water line? That's what causes fly strike. There is a bit more of a progressed attack on the bum. However, still very, very early this one. Okay, so here's the final go. See how all this is dark? This will be like that within a couple hours. See how it's dripped down the bum and then it's filtered off her tail? This here is the worst part of this strike. But you see how... I'll clean that up a little bit. Something else I talked about in my comments is um, other animals can get fly strike too. It's not just because of wool. Rabbits can get it. Deer can get it. Something else I'll mention is when you're shearing places like this where there's floppy skin, you grab and you pull to tighten the skin and it gives you a flatter base so you don't cut the sheep. Chuck, um, chuck this back in the ute and move on to the next one. Seems like our first customer's gone. There she is at the back somewhere. There she is there. Just wait a second, you'll see her. There she is, just standing there staring at me. The rest all look fine. I don't see any other signs of fly blownness. So... I'll just do one more quick check, then we'll check that other mob to see if I can find the tummy one. And then we're moving on to the next one. When you're checking for fly-blown sheep, you've got to look at every single sheep. You go like this, so you're spreading them out over a larger distance. And what you're doing is you're check looking at each individual sheep and you're looking for changes in their wool. That sheep there, she's just got weird wool around her legs, so she's not fly-blown. You're looking for dents. Back to that first paddock. I can't find her. I've popped her in on the list on mobile to be done. Um, I don't know where she's gone. I'm pretty sure I've looked at every single sheep twice and I cannot see her. Just checking these lambs. Um, they all look fine. Uh, don't see any signs of fly strike. Normally when lambs get it, they get pretty pathetic pretty quickly. They just mope and stand there and wiggle their tail and try to chew their tail. Ewes are more resilient when it comes to fly strike. Lambs are pretty obvious when they've got it. And to me, they all seem very happy. I'll just finish going around these guys and we'll move on to the next mob. Oh, well, well I'm just going through these lambs. As you can see, they're plentiful. <laughs> um, while I'm here though, we'll just, we'll, we'll, I'll answer some comments. So, oh, hang on. We got a sh lamb out here by itself. Bet you it's fly blown. Are you fly blown? Yep. Who would have thought? As I said, lamb soul. We'll fight the comments in a minute. Keeps hiding in fucking thistles, thinking I can't see it. We got her. Oh. Okay. That was a struggle. I assure you, dude, I'm not that bad. Right, what was I saying? Oh, so I got a comment of someone saying about pulling out the lamb, lucky her insides didn't come out. Babe, I've been doing this for a while. I got it, mate. Don't worry about it. won't spin where I want it to. If there's any companies out there watching this who do shears without cordless shears and want to send me some, that would be great. So while I was doing that, a couple of sheep got out on the fucking road. So now we're just going to chase them back up to their paddock. Normally, you can't get them out of the fucking paddock. For some reason today, let's go through the gate. Your paddock, please go back in your paddock. For the love of God, please turn left. Thank you. Just gonna shut this gate while we do these lambs. These, I don't think there's many lambs in here, so this should be a quick one. 
I'm just checking these prime lines here. These should all be pretty much used now, except a couple of young lambs. Okay, prime lines all look good. Uh, the surgeon that's looking after Tybro's case is currently in a consultation, so he's gonna call me after he's finished. That would be such a good sheep to shear. The one with the nude neck. Don't have to worry about shearing her front or her tummy. She's totally nude, apart from her back and a little bit up at the back of her neck. That is what all our sheep are gonna look like eventually. Well, they'll have um, color in their face so they're not just pink because sheep with pink, like pink plain faces are more susceptible to stuff like photos, photo, photo sense, photos, uh, uh, Photosensitization, skin cancer, and all sorts of things. Ideally, you don't want plain faced sheep. Then they're gonna have black feet, which means they're gonna be foot rot resistant. You'll only have to shear, if you have to shear them, the back of their neck and then just their back and just to the sides. That's it. Perfect sheep, that'd be. And then hopefully, be nice to have a little bit of color in there so they're a bit more exciting to look at rather than just a sea of white sheep. Another one. Bloody lambs. He's gonna be another one for Dad's list. I can't chase him in here. I can feel the youth sinking. Do you bitches ever stay where you're fucking put? Gotcha. He was sitting down, scratching his bum like a dog. Should be an easy catch. This one he is just gone through the fence. For fuck's sake. I think this video perfectly illustrates how important a working dog is. Considering I've only been able to do maybe half of the fly-blown sheep I've found. It also probably shows how reliant I am on I was thinking, I suppose this is what people use lassoes and shepherd's crooks for. To catch the sheep. More prime line ewe lambs. They all seem fine. Except that one with the fly strike around its gut. All right, let's see if we can catch you. Seems like they're just gonna do what lambs do and just run round and round and round around the dam. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this one either, unless I get them on this one. Come on. Please, yes, go out there, go out there. Now I need to find her again. Hell. There's a couple with armpit like dirt on their under their arms. I'm wondering if I saw that and not fly blown. Um, not having a good run today. It's a bit of a fucking disaster. I'll go check the back paddock. All these ewe lambs look brilliant, no problems at all. Next paddock is these merinos and apparently a couple crossbreds. They all look fine. I don't see any signs of fly blownness in any of these merinos. They've all been clicked, so they've all had preventative measures taken onto them. One lamb in here in the bean stubble is fly blown. I'm hoping I can catch it. It does look pretty sad, so I might be able to. He did lay down quite easily. He was a nice, easy grab. You are not dead, dude. You're being very overdramatic. Off your hole. There you go. Okay. Just heard she's getting picked up at three, so I'm getting organized to leave now. I'm bringing burrito bed. I think the leading collar's still on her. They did use a slip leash, but I'm pretty sure the collar was still on her, so we should be right. Burrito. We're in traffic. My sluggy is just in there. Just not have Cora. Because normally she's nude. Yeah, that's, that's totally fine. It'll probably be better so it's not rubbing up against the wound. Stop it. It's coming. Schlur. We're on our way home with Schlur. She's not happy, she's not amused or impressed. It's the train again. Right, we're home now, Slug's here. No, don't do that. She's scratching her neck. Hello, Cage Slug. 
Hello, my little escargot. Are you having a good time? Jeremy. Okay. Upgraded typo to an inflatable donut and a bigger cage so she can roam a bit more and do what she needs to do. Hello, it's now Sunday. Typo is now free roaming minus the donut. This is her wound. Um, she's almost going back down to her collar. Her neck has... Well, she probably could now. Originally, couldn't fit on this one here, and this is Delta, the German Shepherd's collar. But now, she could probably go down a size again. Thanks for watching. Like or typo will put a grass seed in your neck. I first saw this lamb yesterday, and it was did not look like this at all. I did not. The humidity that we've got at the moment is shocking.